Keeping a small flock of chickens in your backyard has many benefits from supplying you with fresh, healthy eggs from well-cared animals to giving you great fertilizer for your gardening, your pastures, as well as being a pet owner to a chicken. So lately there's been an influx that I have seen of people that want to become backyard chicken keepers. And I would assume that it's due to the rising cost of eggs. So naturally everyone wants to be a chicken keeper and they think that getting a small flock will be the best bang for their buck and they can have fresh eggs. So I figured it would be a really good time to talk about raising, keeping chickens in your backyard, we'll call it since backyard chicken farming on a small scale, on a large scale, because I've personally had a flock at one point of 50 birds. And now I have a smaller flock of about 10 birds. I've had chickens for about five years now. So I would like to say that I'm pretty experienced and I've had multiple different sizes, flocks, multiple different types of breeds, everything, you name it, multiple different types of illnesses, dozens of eggs a day to four to five eggs a day, all of the things in between. First thing that we are going to be talking about is purchasing these things right here, AKA chickens. So this is Franny, make her introduction. Say hi, I'm Franny. It's really important to, if you're going to purchase adult birds from a reputable breeder. So anybody can pretty much sell you a hen, a rooster. Let's get that out of the way too. A hen is a female chicken. A rooster is a male. And we're talking about adults because juveniles have different names like pullets for females and <laughs> cockerels for um, young males. So I'm talking about purely adult birds right now. So we're talking roosters or chickens, but mostly if you have backyard chickens for the purpose of eggs, you are likely focusing on hens. If you're trying to reproduce, then obviously you would need a rooster. We're gonna mostly be talking about hens today. So if you are purchasing hens, it's really important to purchase from a reputable breeder that is known to not have disease in their flock, because even if your bird isn't sick, but the facility that it's coming from has sick birds. It can easily transfer over to your flock. It could just be a carrier of that disease and then get the rest of your flock sick if you are bringing in adult birds. So like I said, lots of diseases and illnesses can run through chickens and you don't wanna be purchasing chickens that you're just gonna waste your money on if they die shortly after they're in your care because they came in with a disease or an illness. We hardly even add adult birds to my flock just because of that fact right there. And sometimes if I do, on rare occasions, it will definitely be from somebody that I trust, have seen their establishment, know their flock, and I still quarantine them for up to 30 days. So that's the first piece of information is getting the birds, unless you get them as chicks. That obviously is a little bit different process and I'm not really gonna be talking about chicks today because I have a whole nother video that I will link in the description down below for you guys. If you wanna learn about raising chicks, so we're just talking about adults. So now that you have your flock or are starting to think about getting your flock, it's time to think about where they're actually going to live their chicken house, their coop, whatever you like to call it. We call it a coop because that's most commonly used in chicken world is a coop. So that is essential number two of taking care of backyard chickens. So fortunately in chicken world, there is a variety of options that you can use as a chicken coop. One option of a coop is a prefabricated coop like one of these. This is actually from Tractor Supply. There's also some online that you can have shipped as well. These type of coops are not my favorite at all because they are not usually nicely made and usually they are high in price because of the convenience of them. While it does work as a coop, these coops often are advised for about four to five birds. That is completely inaccurate. The setup of these, yes, they do come with nesting boxes, a pull-out tray for um, droppings, a small roost bar, but this is not at all, in my opinion, equipped for four to five birds, honestly, maybe one to two birds. I don't even think any chickens truly should be housed in a prefabricated chicken coop like this. It's just, to me, not practical, doesn't make any sense. It's not even like a big enough run for chickens to act like chickens. So maybe if you have two to three chickens and you want them to free range, this might be okay for that. But to me, these type of coops are just not worth it, they're not practical, and they're usually expensive. So I would typically advise against something like this, but if you're just starting off and this is your only option, it's definitely a decent option because they're already prefabricated. You don't need to do much work. You just either need to put them together or sometimes they'll come together. That's option one, not my most favorite option, but let's talk about option number two. So my next option would be that you can build your coop from the ground up and you can completely customize it. Um, you can go overboard and look at so many different things on Pinterest of all different ideas 
that you can make for your chickens. And that's what happened to me. And this is the order that started with me. I started with a tractor supply chicken coop, and then I went to a coop that I built from the ground up. And I thought it had everything that I wanted and I didn't love it, but it had a run, which we'll get into. It was high off the ground, so it didn't flood. And it had a man door that you could walk into, um, which I thought was really cool, but it just didn't fully do it for me in the long run. So now there's other options still. People use plastic playhouses, so many other variety of materials you can make them out of. But right now, I'm gonna be most importantly talking about my favorite option, and it is a garden shed. I have a whole video and a whole article about turning a old garden shed into the chicken coop of oh, my dreams because there's so much options that you can do with a garden shed because the shell is so good. So let me show you my chicken coop that's right behind us and I made it out of a garden shed. This is my chicken coop and it was a metal garden shed and I just basically refurbished it, put wood on there, board and batten just for aesthetics. This is the door, again, it was a metal door put wood on it. I have a bunch of videos of renovating this coop on my channel, but let's go in and let me show you the essentials that you need in your chicken coop, no matter what method or what material you use for your chicken coop. So we're talking essentials because you can get as fancy and creative as you want in a chicken coop, but what's most important, because they don't really care what exactly it looks like, they care about their needs being met. So first thing that your coop absolutely needs are roosting bars. You can have your roosting bars be skinnier, bigger. For me, I like using two by fours on the flat side. When you put your roosting bars up, you wanna stagger them. One obviously being the lowest that they can possibly get to, but they do like to be up high, nothing too close to the ground. And then when you stagger them, push them out a little bit so they're not pooping on each other. And having an adequate amount of room of roosting bar to the amount of chickens that you have is so important. Roosting bars are probably the one of the most important pieces in a chicken coop because your chicken needs good rest. Roosting bars are where they rest. This would pretty much be the only time that they're on the roosting bars is when they are resting. Obviously you need some type of ventilation depending on where you live, if you need warmer climates. I know some people will suggest heat lamps. I will never suggest a heat lamp in a chicken coop, but that's just my opinion. I think it's a fire hazard. So I don't really mess with um, heat lamps, but we don't really need to since I am in Florida. So for us in Florida, good ventilation would be windows. We have windows on either side that lets the breeze come through so it feels really nice in the coop. You don't want it to be like a little hot box in here for them. Plus chickens are actually little heaters so if you do think it's sometimes too cold for them, you might be wrong sometimes because they are little heaters. So we have roosting bars, ventilation. Now let's talk about the amount of room in your coop. You want to make sure that especially if your chickens are not free range that there's enough room in your coop, enough space for them to walk around and get out of the coop so now that we have the space covered if you are trying to raise your chickens for eggs you need a nesting box it's recommended that you need about one nesting box to four to five birds so i have right now i have about nine hens and they pretty much only use one to two nesting boxes it's just like a thing but like i said i've had a flock of 50 before so we have eight nesting boxes. This is just what we accommodated for our original size flock. And it's just stay, they can choose whatever box they want. Nice clean bedding for them. And that will be adequate for them with nesting boxes. Not a true necessity because if you plan to open up the big door that you have for your chickens, but a way for them to get in and out of the coop, if this would be connected to a run, which we're about to get into, then you would want them to be able to get out of this main coop and into a chicken run. Next super important part of a chicken coop, which is almost like the extension of the chicken coop, is where your chickens are gonna see daylight and go outside, whether that's free range. My chickens are free range, so that's why they have just this one structure, but by no means is this structure equipped for if they were not free range. Your chickens cannot live in something like this full time. It's not fair to your chickens, it's not right. They either need a run, which would be attached to your coop, and it would be completely chicken wire, hard cloth wire, whatever you, use it will have a roof so that predators don't get into it but it will be basically them coming out of their enclosed coop into the outside world experiencing the ground in my last coop it was an enclosed run my chickens didn't really free range much but now since they free range we open up the coop in the morning they come out we close the coop at night and that's just what works for us so basically it's like their sleep area where they lay their eggs and where they come to eat because their food and water is in there if you had a run 
and didn't want to let them free range because of predators or whatever your situation is with your backyard. They would just come out the little hole that I was talking to you guys about, come out into their run, experience the world and they can go in and out. You can keep your food and water out into your run or whatever, however you want to set it up. But that is essential is having some place for them to get out of a coop. These two things are like my last essentials for a coop. It's a feeder and a water. Speaking of food, you have your chickens, you have a place for them to stay. Now you need to know how to feed them. So chickens are actually omnivores. So they like to eat grains, scratch grains like they're doing right now. Insects, anything really a chicken will pretty much eat even their own eggs. Chickens are pretty easy to feed. Lately though, feed has been going up in price. So that's something to consider, but there's mainly two types of feed and that is either a pelleted form or a crumbled form. We get the crumbled form, just I don't know why, it's just what we like. You can even feed them leftovers. Sometimes I like to think of them as my garbage disposals because if something is about to go bad, but not going bad, I don't advise giving any animal any type of food that's going bad. I will give them the leftovers, things like that. They will literally even eat cow manure, they're pretty much gonna eat anything. They are really easy to please in the food department, but it's very important that you make sure that they have enough calcium. If you want good, strong eggshells of the eggs that they lay, you need to make sure that they have an adequate source of calcium. So if your chickens aren't free range, it is important to make sure that they have what's called oyster shells. You can actually purchase them. That's a great source of calcium for them. What I like to personally do is you can collect their egg shells after you are done eating your eggs, keep them, put them in the oven, bake them, and then feed their shells back to them. That's a great source of calcium. It's a great source of recycling, so you don't have to pay for oyster shells. My girls are all free range, so they do get enough calcium as well because of all the rocks and shells in the yard that they constantly are picking at. So making sure that they have a good source of calcium, grains, any type of food, super easy to feed them. I like to give my girls treats all the time too, which you don't have to do, it's not a necessity, but they really love mealworms. Here's my little flock here, some of them. And I love to give them mealworms as a treat. And then another thing I've been liking to give them lately is organic scratch grains. I've been keeping it in this little chicken picnic table I got off Amazon. It's so cute. Again, not a necessity. You can find something else to put your scratch grains in, but I just thought it was cute and hygienic. I have this linked in the description down below if you guys want to get this off Amazon. Also, you can go down the rabbit hole of vitamins and minerals if you wanted to. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind. I don't do much of that around here just because I like to keep my birds as organic as possible. But if you want to look into that, that's something also that you have to consider. So the next important thing I want to talk about, and it's maybe just an awareness, is predators. Like I've said, I've had a flock of 50 and I've had a small flock. And I'm not going to lie, it's due to predators. The main predators for us are raccoons, foxes, coyotes, owls, hawks. And that's pretty much going to be across the board for everywhere because those are the main predators for them. Obviously, some areas don't have all of those type of predators, but... We have all of those predators and they are not kind to chickens. And unfortunately chickens aren't like the smartest at getting away from predators. Obviously they have a disadvantage because they're not really like flying birds, they run. So it is very important to understand that this comes along with chickens and making sure that you are able to protect your chickens against predators and what animals can potentially come to your farm, your backyard with the presence of chickens being in your backyard. So. You might not ever get raccoons, foxes, coyotes, owls, or hawks before you had chickens, but you will most definitely get those after you have chickens. So another one of those things that I wanna bring up, like we brought up predators, is also health and sickness of chickens because it's something that you need to also be aware of because chickens can come down with a multitude of illnesses and diseases and can honestly die very quickly. It is sometimes hard once you see the symptoms of a chicken being sick to recover that chicken it's not impossible and there's really good resources out there that can help you in healing or recovery of your chickens a lot of those resources for me over the years have been facebook groups so if you just have a facebook account there are so many different chicken groups that you can go on and they will tell you how to pretty much cure treat help any disease or illness that a chicken has unfortunately in my area at least, and what I've kind of observed around the US is there's really not a lot of resources for chicken vets. Um, if it's anything like that, it's usually like an exotic animal vet. And I have 
had experience with them a couple times and they really don't solve much just because there is a multitude of factors and elements that can cause chickens to get ill. I'm not sure if there's enough like study and maybe even the care of vets to really focus on chickens. So a lot of the time it is like home care and learning different things, which is a, actually an interesting part about backyard chicken keeping is because you do get to learn so many different things, but unfortunately you are put in positions where you might need to nurse a chicken back to health and things like that. And you just have to be prepared for that because that can happen. It's not as easy as taking your dog to the vet, but along those diseases, there is things like coccidious, merix, respiratory diseases, things that are called lash eggs, water bellies, impacted crops. And that's just a very small amount of diseases. Like I said, they can carry so many diseases. And once one gets it, if it's a flock, a lot of the times, if it's contagious, the whole flock will get it. And then you have to treat everybody and then it gets expensive and then you have to retreat. So it can be a crazy process that you really need to be dedicated to. And another thing too, is it's hard to get rid of certain diseases. So coccidious, in, in my last coop, it actually ended up growing into the ground and the only way for us to get rid of that disease would to be pull up all of the ground underneath it and restart completely fresh or move the coop elsewhere but that is a big problem if you have a smaller yard and your yard gets that disease in it it's sometimes hard to rid of that disease and any new birds that you bring in will get sick and won't have the immune system to handle it and then you will lose birds left and right so just being aware of the sickness and illness that chickens can acquire and that it does take a lot of home care to get them back to recovery because they are these little animals that don't have huge immune systems. So always making sure that you are observing your chickens poop, their breathing, their eyes, their feet, all of those things just to really make sure that you can catch a disease early on before it infiltrates your whole flock. We've pretty much gone over everything that you need to know about starting off raising backyard chickens, but let's talk about the actual daily care and bring it into a little bit of a routine of taking care of my chicken. Any animal or even yourself, you wanna make sure that your chickens have fresh food and water every day. So with the systems of chicken feeders and waters, you can pretty much have a set it and forget it program because they're usually fillable up to five gallons. So we don't need to refill ours every single day, but you do just wanna do a daily check and make sure that they have food and water every single day. Since my chickens are free range every morning, we have to open the coop, let all my chickens out. And every night we have to close up my coop and make sure that all of our chickens are away. And I do count all of my chickens every night just to make sure that every single one is in the coop before I close the coop down. Next, you wanna make sure that you are collecting your eggs. I have a bad habit of not collecting my eggs, but this year it's been a resolution to go out and every day collect my eggs. If you don't collect their eggs, there's a couple things that can happen. One, they can rot. Two, you can create a broody hen, which is a hen that wants to lay on eggs, which means she wants to basically incubate them and hatch them out. So you're gonna have that issue. If you don't want that issue, you will have that issue. I don't mind that issue, but a lot of people do mind that issue. The third problem that you can encounter with leaving your eggs in your coop is you can actually create chickens that eat your eggs. If they see them in there for a while, they might just, you know, on accident crack one or if one cracks and they get a taste of that yolk, they're gonna continue to eat your eggs. So it's important to take your eggs out every single day if you wanna collect eggs and actually have eggs. So those are like the main problems and also it can attract other predators if you keep eggs in there. So it's always just make sure, take your eggs out. I know I'm the worst one to say that because I'm really bad about collecting them, but like I said, this year I've been really good about it. And the last thing would be just coop maintenance, making sure that your coop isn't getting too messy. Now it doesn't mean that's a daily thing. It could be like a weekly, a monthly, just depending on how many birds you have, how dirty your coop gets, but definitely include that in your maintenance is making sure that your coop stays clean. So that wraps up all my beginner advice on how to start being a backyard chicken keeper, or maybe you already are and just wanted a couple more helpful tips. Whichever stage that you are in of being a backyard chicken keeper, I hope that some of this was able to help you. And if you don't have any chickens, I hope this was maybe enlightening to you to know if you are either going to continue on your search of getting chickens or if this is taking you at a halt and you don't wanna go further with chickens. Overall, I will say that chickens can be an easy pet to actually keep. I will advise though that keeping a smaller flock is way easier than a larger flock, a nice healthy small flock, and you'll still get a good amount of eggs. Chicken lays about an egg a day. Hopefully all your hens will lay and you won't need a huge amount of eggs. But that's pretty much all my advice that I have for you when you are just getting started. If you guys have any other comments, questions, concerns, 
or need any other advice, of course, leave them in the comments down below. If you guys liked today's video, if you thought it was helpful, make sure you go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below. Make sure you turn those post notifications so you don't miss any of these videos.